Hi guys, Dr. B here. This is 8B Chemistry Topic 3.5, Kinetic Molecular Theory. If you hear random jingling, um, that is Coco the dog that I'm dog sitting right now, puppy sitting. So in case you hear random jingling, that's why. Like that. So the objective is to be able to explain the relationship between the motion of particles and the macroscopic properties of gases with the kinetic molecular theory, a particulate model, and a graphical representation. Kinetic molecular theory is a simplified model that describes the nature of gases. There's a few postulates that relate to behavior of each gas particle. The size of a gas particle is so small compared with the distances between the particles that the volume is negligible. That is to say, it's so small that the volume of the gas particles can be ignored. Gas particles are in constant random motion. They move in straight lines until they bump into each other or the walls of the container. When the particles bump into the walls of the container, this results in the phenomenon we call gas pressure. The particles are assumed to have no attractive or repulsive forces between them. In other words, IMFs can be ignored, therefore it's ideal. The kinetic, in, uh, sorry, the average kinetic energy of a sample of a gas is proportional to the Kelvin temperature. Kinetic energy equals half the mass mv, half the mass velocity squared. So that should sound familiar if you took chemistry last year. Over the years, there have been a series of gas laws that have been, say, created based on the relationship of different properties of gas and how they uh, relate to one another. So, you know, Boyle's law of pressure and volume, P1, V1 equals P2, V2, there's an inverse relationship. Charles's law, volume over temperature, so it's a direct relationship, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Gay-Lussac's law, pressure and temperature related, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, and their direct relationship as well. Avogadro's hypothesis law, volume and the number of moles are direct relationship, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. This shows the distribution of kinetic energies of particles at a given temperature. So the three humps you see, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, I don't know, on this distribution on, the X, on this X and Y axis of speed and number of molecules, uh, these are uh, can be interchangeable in the sense that you can use a cold gas and a hot gas or more molar mass, less molar mass, all that type of stuff. So for now, let's say that the medium, the green one, is room temperature gas. If you cool it down, there's less motion, lower kinetic energy, so the average speed will be slowed down, and the majority of molecules will be have, a, have that lower speed. If you bump up the temperature, you increase kinetic energy for all the molecules. So the average speed will be greater for more molecules than the previous ones type of thing. <clears throat> By increasing the temperature of a gas, the distribution of the particle shifts to the right. Notice that not every particle has the same energy. The temperature measures an average of the kinetic energy. The temperature of, a, of this first gas here is greater than the temperature of the second gas. The mass is the same, but the velocity differs. This results in a difference in the kinetic energy. So whenever we're looking at kinetic energy, mass, and volume, most likely one will be, the kinetic energy will be the same. They may say the temperature is the same for both gases, but the mass is increased for one gas. What is the effect on velocity? Something like that. In this next example, the mass of the particle differs, but the velocity is the same. This also results in a difference in kinetic energy. The formula for calculating the average for kinetic energy, K, uh, kinetic energy equals half uh, mass velocity squared. Uh, the mass is in par uh, the particles is in kilograms. The velocity is meters squared, and then the kinetic energy is then calculated in joules. So rate of effusion, that is the ability to diffuse through a small hole, and it's related to the size of the particles. Graham's law describes this relationship. 
So you don't have to do any math with this, but conceptually you have to have a general understanding of this. So you have two gas, you have a gas, um, and it's on one side of a partition. You remove the partition, and it, it diffuses. It goes from one end to another. That's what's happening in the first uh, diagram. In the second diagram, however, there is a small partition in the uh, or small partition. There's a small hole in the partition. I'm sorry. So this is called effusion, where the gas is going to leave from one end of the par of the partition to another through this um, hole that's created. That's called effusion. However, there is something specific that we have to know. And it's right here in this, um, hold on. Given a sample of H2, HCl, and Cl2 at the same temperature, place the orders, sorry, place the particles in order of decreasing average particle speed. So that means it wants to go from fastest to slowest. Uh, since all have the same kinetic energy because they're at the same temperature, the largest mass therefore has the least velocity. So the order of decreasing average particle speed will be H2, HCl, Cl2. Consider an equimolar mixture of gases, H2, N2, and F2, placed into a container with a pinhole opening. After some time, place the gases in order of increasing amount remaining in the container. So let's say we have a container. And there's a pinhole opening here. So to understand, we have to realize that we're looking at the molar mass. H2 will be about 2.0 grams per mole. N2 is 28.0 grams per mole. And F2 will be about 38.0 grams per mole. So to kind of, let's, I, don't, I kind of want to practice our um, particle drawing stuff. So let's say this will be my H2, this will be my N2, this will be my F2. So let's say it's equal molar, so that means that and it doesn't really give us a specific number, obviously. Let's say equal molar means that each of these particles will have the same amount of moles, if you will, on one side of the container. So let's just say that there's four moles of each thing. So this would be, is that even the same color? My bad. That's my H2, 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 H2. Green will be my N2, 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 N2. F2 will be my largest one. So according to the law of effusion with the Graham's law, rate of effusion and all that, its effusion is proportion is a directly inversely proportional to its mass. So if it's a bigger mass, it's going to effuse at a slower rate. So just when we're doing this, just think about this. So as it's going through, the first one that's most likely going to go through the most will be H2, followed by N2, then F2 least because of its mass. The question is asking, place them in order of increasing amount remaining in this container over here. So it will be H2, oops, H2, oh my lord, H2, N2, oh my gosh, and F, F2. All right, well, 
That's it for now. Let me know if any questions. Bye.